Would you guys, if you don't want your data in the cloud, then get yourself one of these instead. This is the TerraMaster Data Storage Master. It's the F2212 version. It's a brand new release from TerraMaster. This is exactly what you get in the kit. Some user manuals and guarantee, some screws, and also some sticky labels. You got your power adapter here for UK, but there will be one for European countries as well. Also, we've got our Ethernet cable and we have the device itself. This is a two bay NAS, as you can see here. The device is made of plastic and metal, and uh, we'll take a quick look at it here. So, this is a new design uh, from TerraMaster. We've got two bays on the front, which take quite a bit of uh, data. If you want to put in uh, large drives in here, you can do. And uh, again, this is an entry level type of NAS. Got some ventilation with their name on the side there called TerraMaster. And we have one on the other side as well. I'll quickly show you that as well. And this will help with ventilation and things like that as well. So there we have the TerraMaster logo. On the back of the device, you can see we do have our power button here. We have the fan. We have two USB ports on here. And we also have our Ethernet connection on here and our power input. And you have the screws to access the actual drive itself if you want to make upgrades and things like that you can take this apart and gain access to it via this method here now we'll go through the specs a little bit later on in a video but before we continue here i'm just going to have a quick word from today's video sponsor cd key sales if you're looking for a cheap windows 11 pro oem key or a cheap windows 10 pro oem key as well you've got retail keys on there as well if you want one of those all you need to do is check out the links in the video description, create an account and click on the buy now button and use my promo code capital B capital R 09 and apply this to your order and you'll get a 30% discount on all your purchases. Once you've done that, you can click the submit now and pay by PayPal and you can use this to get rid of that annoying watermark on your computer. OK, so back to the tutorial here. What we're going to do here is push the top bit here and slide this out. This is a new mechanism uh, from TerraMaster here. This is a plastic drive tray here all we need to do here is the tallest design you can put three and a half inch drives in here and you can also put two and a half inch drives in here or ssds if you wish you will need to use the screws for two and a half inch drives but with three and a half inch drives you can use the actual tallest design here so let's go ahead and pop these off and what we'll do is populate a couple of little drives in here just to show how to set it up and get it working so slot your drive in you should see the actual uh, connections on this side here and what we're going to do here is snap on the tallest design here. You should see an arrow at the very bottom here. Click this into position and this locks the drive into place. Let's just do that other side here. Now, if you want to use large storage drives here, you can do. And this will give you plenty of backup storage for your computer and your other devices around your home. You can access these from outside your home or around your local network in your home as well. And it's a good place to back up your data or watch movies and things like that from this device. So what I'm going to do is quickly slot this into position. All we need to do here is line it up and then just uh, slot this in. And once we slot this in, click it into position just like so. And now we have that drive bay populated. Of course, you only got two here. So you're going to probably need to put two drives in at the beginning. And again, we're going to put the power adapter in and also get that Ethernet cable plugged in the back here. And this will make this NAS uh, detectable on your local network so you can connect to it via all of your devices. So let's go ahead and get this powered on. And once we get it powered on, it's going to go through the setup phase, which I'll show you how to do. Very simple and easy to do. You don't need to be a network engineer to set one of these up. It's really, really easy. If you use the default settings, it will take care of all the hard work for you and basically set it up. So let's go ahead and get this powered on. You should see the green LED lights uh, illuminated now on one and two bays. And uh, what we're going to do here is now go to the computer and uh, we're going to set up it via the uh, browser. So let's go over to the computer here and open up a browser to get this set up. So you should see the TerraMaster website here. It should say all this stuff on your uh, setup guide pamphlet that you get. Give yourself an email and choose which uh, model you're using here. And then you can click on start. This will then go through a bunch of uh, sequences here. And you should now see a window popping up saying initialization. And all you need to do here now is click on start and it will take care of all this for us. So let's go ahead and click on the start button and move to the initialization. So you should see on the software that you can download from there, it's not detected to the actual device yet because we haven't set it up. So what I'm going to do here is click on start and get this set up. So you should see the loading page. It will say warning 
data will be erased on those drives. So if there's any data on those drives, it's going to erase them and set it up for us. So I'm going to agree to this and click on next so we can get this done here. You can see hard drive compatibility list uh, is there. You can click on that and check this out. I'm leaving this as default because it will take care of all the hard work for us. And if you've never used one of these before, just leave it on default and you should be good to go. Later on, hard drive one and the hard drive two will be erased. You want to continue, click yes, and away it goes. It's going to now download and install the TOS and install it onto our NAS. This does take a bit of time, so be patient. It can take up to 10 minutes. And you should see something like this saying your TNAS is restarting and it will take a bit of time. You should now see on the software that it's detected our NAS. And we can now click on the login on this here. And once we've got this done, we can click confirm. And we now should see the super user settings. This is for being the super user, like the admin of this uh, device. So what you can do now is give yourself a username, a password, and basically set up your security email. And they will send you a verification code. And all you need to do there is uh, put the verification code in and click next. And this will start to set up the account uh, for this particular NAS. Once that's all done, we can now click on next and you should see data on the hard drive will be erased. And it says finally, and what it's going to do is set it all up for us. So let's go ahead and let that do its thing. It does take a little bit of time. So let's go ahead and click next and it will move on to the next stage. Now, once this is done, you should now see your desktop here. We can now click on the accept their terms and then click confirm. And now you have access to your NAS. What's going to happen now is the storage pool will start to uh, sort itself out and get ready. It does take a bit of time, so be patient depending on the size of your drives. And once that's all done, you should be able to then create your user accounts and start creating all of your content on your NAS, whether it be backing up your phone or backing up your computer. Or maybe you want to set up a Plex server or set up a web hosting server or virtual machines. You can do a ton of stuff with your NAS. You just have to let the uh, volume and the storage pool sort itself out because you can't create the volume until the storage pool is done. And once that's all synchronized and finished, you will be able to use your NAS for whatever it is you want to use it for. It's a great way of backing up all of your data and keeping it all safe on your local network. Again, you can plug in an external drive to this and make a backup of your NAS to there. And I've already shown you how to do that in other videos. And this is important because this makes sure you're going to back up all the volume for your particular NAS. So if anything goes wrong, you'll always have a way of recovering. Now, you will be on redundancy here. So if any one of the drives fails, you'll be able to put in a new drive and it will rebuild the RAID array. And basically, all your data will be back. So it's a really good way of backing up your system. Again, you should always have an off-site backup as well, i.e. a cloud, but some people don't like using the cloud. Again, you can always have another drive where you can put data onto and store it in, say, for instance, someone else's house or a fireproof safe or whatever it is you want to do off-site, but you should be using a 321 backup system. So you've got your security here, which means you can check your security out to make sure you've got all green ticks or green uh, check marks on all of your security settings. Like I said, there's tons of apps on here to use. You've got IOMI Backupper and CloudSync and a bunch of other stuff on here for backup and other things like that. There's also some community apps where community members make their own apps and you can use those. But there is quite a few things on here like Terra Photos and a VPN server and things like that, which is quite useful. Web server, Plex Media server. Uh, NB server, you can see there's quite a few here, and there's going to be more added to this later on in the future as well. So, if you're looking for something on a budget and you don't want to spend a load of money, then something like this could be right up your street because these are not that expensive, these versions. So, I'll, I'll tell you what they are in a second. But who is this NAS actually designed for? I think it's more designed at the beginner or the entry level into NASs, or maybe uh, you're on a tight budget and you just want to start out on your first NAS, then this is going to be ideal uh, for you. Again, it's not expensive. Uh, the drives are going to be a fair bit of money. But once you get this, you should be up and running in no time at all. You can see it's got the ARM V82 Cortex A55 64-bit quad-core 1.7 gigahertz processor. Only one gigabyte of system memory on here. Maximum supported memory is one gigabyte. So it's not upgradable by the looks of it. And also we do have here uh, disk slot slots number two, which means we have two bays on here. Does support two and a half inch and three and a half inch drives. 
and you can see the maximum size of terabytes that you can put in this device. You can also plug devices in the back on the USB port. Quite low wattage there as well. Comes in around about £169.99 for this particular type of NAS. So if you haven't got one and you're on a tight budget, buying something like this might be okay for you. And you can basically put your two drives in there and you should be up and running in no time at all. It's really good to have a NAS if you've never had one before. Once you get one, you'll wonder how you did without one for all this time. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I just want to say a quick shout out to all my tier one, tier two and tier three YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support. I shall see you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Have a lovely day and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.